Hi everyone, it's Kenna Magania, and today I'm back for session three of Have a Writing Revolution in Your Classroom. Let's review why we're talking about the writing revolution. This method, called the Hockman Method, is rooted in research. It aligns to our instructional shifts in ELA that we've been talking about for the past few years. It also builds student comprehension by beginning with grammar basics. You can apply this method to any content area and any grade level. The Hockman Method begins with sentences, which are the basic building blocks of writing. Then they progress to outlines, paragraphs, and eventually compositions. But none of these pieces would be able to happen if our students don't have a strong foundation in sentence writing. Let's dive in. Today we're going to talk about note taking. Note taking is a very essential step that our students need to be able to create powerful outlines. This teaches our students to distinguish between essential and non-essential material. It boosts absorption, retention, and comprehension of information. It promotes analytical thinking, and it enables students to outline. How many times have you asked your students, why aren't you taking notes? Or tell them, you need to be taking notes right now. And then, don't they usually want to write down everything that's on the slide or everything from the book? Right. So we need to teach our students how to take notes. The research is very clear on what it says about note taking. Whether it's taking notes from lectures or from reading, explicit note taking has been shown to improve student learning. Getting trained in specific note taking strategies can significantly improve the quality of notes and the amount of material students remember later. That's what we want our students to do. We want them to truly learn whatever it is that we're teaching them. Note taking includes three pieces, keywords and phrases, abbreviations, and symbols. Some of these our students may be a little bit more familiar with, but I encourage us to create some sort of norms in our classroom and across our whole school that we use for note taking. We'll talk about that in just a moment. So sentence expansion that we talked about last time, that is the foundation for note taking. So let's say we'll give my students this sentence here. He will not come down. Well, who? Who is this sentence about? When? When are we wanting the, the, the animal or he, whoever it is, to come down? And why? So we have our students take notes about those specific pieces, and then they're able to create this dynamic sentence at the bottom. After rescuing Judy's cat, Suds will not come down because he is scared. So we're able to take that kernel sentence through some note taking, add some additional pieces to it, to create a more powerful sentence. Some common abbreviations that our students might see or they might want to use in their writing. So we have the first piece up here where it's talking about the W slash, so with, W slash O, without, W slash I, within. These are all various abbreviations that we want to start using in our classroom with our students. So when we're taking notes as a whole class, we wanna make sure that we are using these abbreviations as well. We've had lots of years of practice to learn what all these abbreviations mean. Our students are just learning. So we need to practice patience and give them plenty of examples to look at. Some examples of abbreviations, like the days of the week or the months of the year, or the numbers using the digit instead of the word, those things might be a lot more familiar to our students than, say, the abbreviation for government or the abbreviation for before or because. So we want to give our students a lot of opportunity to see what this looks like throughout the course of our modeling note-taking for our students. And remember, we talked about this before. Whenever our students see dotted lines, that's where they're just taking notes. They should be using keywords and phrases, abbreviations and symbols on these dotted lines. We want them to focus on complete sentences when they see the solid line. 
That's making sure they include proper capitalization and punctuation. So whenever you're creating materials for your students using your tier one curriculum, you want to make sure if it's intended for our students to take notes, let's put some dotted lines on that paper or on that Google slide or Google doc. If we're wanting our students to write in complete sentences, we provide them with those solid lines. By us using a consistent method across all the content areas, it will really help our students improve their note-taking abilities. So let's talk about what this looks like when it comes to instruction. We wanna start out by having our students identify keywords and phrases in a sentence. And we'll look at that a little bit more in just a moment. We want them to convert simple teacher created sentences into notes. So just like you are watching this presentation and you see these words on the slide, how could you take what is on here to put it into notes, something that would be easy for you to refer back to as the student in this course? Think about that when it comes to what you expect from your students. Number three says convert simple teacher created notes into sentences. So we want them to flip it up. Once they have practice with note taking, we want to see, do they truly understand how to take notes? We can test this in a couple of ways. We can provide them with some notes and ask them to create complete sentences using the notes that we've given them. Annotate key ideas in a simple teacher created paragraph. We're starting small. We're starting small. We're not starting big. We want to make sure that this is small. And I'll even challenge you um, to, once you get to number five, annotate key ideas in an authentic text. Here is where we can take it from a paragraph. We can challenge our students to do a multi-paragraph piece of work. But if our students struggle with that, let's take it back down to a smaller piece of authentic text and then build them up from there. So these are the steps that we would follow. Notice we're starting, which is identifying keywords and phrases in a sentence. That's where note-taking begins. So we want our students to identify the most important words and phrases. Here I have two sentences. And these two sentences have various words underlined or phrases underlined because these are what is most important from these sentences. Albany is the capital of New York. Langston Hughes was a great writer of the Harlem Renaissance. The key words we have underlined in these sentences. Symbols. Here is where consistency will be major. So across all your content areas, wherever you're using the writing revolution, you need to make sure that you are using a systematic method of how you want your students to annotate. How do you want them to take notes? That means you need to have the same symbols that are used in ELA, in math, in science, and in social studies. It's really important. So here we see the equal symbol. That means equal, the same as, plus, or the and symbol means and. An arrow pointing to the right leads to results in or cause and effect. An arrow pointed up, increase, growth, rise. An arrow pointed down, decrease or declined. And a slash we'll just use for a new idea. Now, when you're starting this out in elementary school, you want to start small. We need to make sure that whatever we're doing is developmentally appropriate for our babies. So for the elementary students, we would just start with those top three symbols. And an, a good time to start that would be mid third grade. So don't expect our students to be able to, to come with this, you know, at the very beginning of third grade but this is something we can begin introducing in the middle part of their third grade year. And then once they get to fourth, fifth and on up, we would add these additional symbols to help our students be able to create even more dynamic notes. So let's take a look at some of these symbols. The equal sign. 
We would use that when something is the same as, or means that, or is equal to. So we have this sentence here, the top sentence, Rosa Parks was a civil rights leader. Well, we wanna teach our students, how can we take this sentence that's important, has some important information in here, and how can we just extract that important information? So our notes for that sentence would look like this. Rosa Parks equals civil rights leader. Our next sentence, Machu Picchu is a 15th century Incan citadel. So we would use our equal sign again. Machu Picchu equals 15th C for century Incan citadel. Symbols using that plus or the and sign instead of the word and. Wilbur is very small and is a very small and weak pig. So let's use that equal sign from the previous slide and let's add a plus sign to it. Wilbur equals small plus weak pig. Is that the most important information from that sentence? Yeah. Wilbur is a small, weak, and scared pig. Wilbur equals small, comma, weak, plus scared pig. Now I want you to notice something here. You see that comma is still there? We don't take out the commas. We want our students to see where those go, and that's important even in note-taking. So the plus sign does not replace a comma. The plus sign simply takes the place of the word and. An arrow, that's used to lead to or results in or to show a cause and effect relationship. So our sentence here, Fern gets upset, so her father keep, lets her keep Wilbur. Fern gets upset, arrow, father lets her keep Wilbur. For our next sentence, here's one from our fourth grade unit on hurricanes. Hurricanes can cause major flooding and damage. Hurricanes, arrow, major flooding plus damage. You see how we're using something that we previously learned and we're adding to it. So we're building our students' ability to be able to take really great notes. We don't wanna throw all these symbols at them at once. They'll never be able to master that. They're gonna get frustrated, they're gonna get overwhelmed. And then you as a teacher are gonna get frustrated and overwhelmed. Save yourself the headache and just start introducing them one at a time and then building upon what they've previously used. Here's a great way where you can have your students practice note taking. You can give them a couple of sentences like the ones here or the top sentence and you can have them create the notes from that sentence. So George Washington was the first president of the United States. GW equals first pres slash US. Then after our students have had lots of practice with note taking, we can give them some notes and ask them, what would that sentence look like? So 1955 slash Rosa Parks' brave actions, arrow, bus boycott slash Montgomery, Alabama. So we would give our students that information and have them create a sentence. Now, if we remember from our very first session, we need to always make sure we have a teacher anticipatory notes. So we would have an idea of where we want our students to go with this. And we would have a few different examples of what that might look like. So in this case, that sentence might look like, in 1955, Rosa Parks' brave actions led to the bus boycott in Montgomery, Alabama. So again, we wouldn't throw this at our students early on after they've had lots of practice with note taking, then we would allow them to kind of flip the script, give them the notes and ask them to create the sentence. And remember from our very first video, this isn't something that we're spending tons of time on every single day. This is something that's just meant to take maybe seven to 10 minutes of your class time. This isn't an all day lesson. We want to introduce it small, but introduce it often, use it often. Here's an example of how you could use it. A do now or a bell ringer for your kids. After they've learned about note taking, they've had a lot of practice with it and you wanna see, okay, well, what did they get? Do they understand what note taking should look like? Give them a sentence and ask them to make some notes. For a do now or a bell ringer, maybe two sentences, 
that way you can review it as a whole class. You can address any misconceptions and you can move on into your lesson. Here's another example where after the students have had lots of practice, they are given notes and asked to create sentences from that. So again, lots of practice before this is introduced. So we need to make sure that we also kind of keep that underlining fresh in our students' mind. We want them to be able to identify those key pieces of information, even as we're moving into more and more complex sentences and more and more complex ideas. So you could give the students a sentence and you could ask them, hey, can you underline the important words or phrases in this sentence and then put it together and show me what your notes would look like. Give them that practice. So here's some tips for teaching note taking. Model note taking in class, especially with those abbreviations for our younger students, they're gonna need to see that very often. Ask students to convert notes into sentences orally. Do this as like a whole class Get our students more comfortable with this before we release them and have that expectation for them to do that on their own. Elicit note taking from students. You guys are reading a text in your class. Say, you know what? I feel like there's some important information in this paragraph we just read. Let's take a look at it sentence by sentence and pull out what is important from this paragraph we just read. In middle school and high school, Note taking can be introduced at the beginning of the, uh, the school year alongside sentence strategies. So at the middle school and high school level, level, our students are ready developmentally to start with note taking day one. Even though we're starting with the sentence strategies as well, the note taking can seamlessly fit right in there with them. So we've talked about a lot in these past three sessions now. And this is all preparing us to be able to create our single paragraph outline. So session four will consist of our single paragraph outline. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, of course, you can join my office hours. Or if you're watching this after the office hours, you can always email me at kmagania at ebrschools.org. You can follow me on Twitter at ELA Updates. And I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Thank you.